the devil attacking your prayer life is not just to get you to backslide that's that's too small a motivation for him to disturb there are no speakings in the world. I refuse to be satisfied. One more drop. And I'll go on a Get into this video you're about to watch. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. I want to give you five steps, five scriptural steps to be free from sexual immorality and every related perversion. And I want you to please listen and learn for yourself and for anybody god may give you the privilege of helping are we together number one for you to be free from lust and immorality the first thing that must happen to you is that you must admit it psalms 51 and verse 17 brokenness is a necessary requirement if you are going to experience the salvation of god on this wise it says the sacrifices of god i hope you know psalm 51 was the psalm of david when prophet nathan came to him and to tell him what had happened to him he was broken repented crying with sackcloth and ashes and this was part of his contemplations it says the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise admit it you must come to that point where you admit it listen let me tell you the truth by the privilege of god's grace i can tell you I have cried with and prayed with many people and do you know there are many people you see who are victims of sexual immorality and on further examining they have very sincere hearts some of them grew up from families where the first place they had that that was wrong was even in church because it was a common practice there are cultures that promote it as part of the cultural activities is that true so it is very difficult that's why in dealing with people you must never throw away the place of compassion and mercy there are people who were left they grew up on their own and by themselves they became victims of sexual exposures even before teenage some were victims from those they grew up under that trusted them now there's no point bringing sad memories but the point is that for you to be free from lust and sexual immorality and any expression of it you must get to a point of admittance that i need help my life needs the mercy of god step number two very quickly if you're learning say amen, amen. step number two you must set aside time for a retreat as soon as possible set aside time for a retreat a retreat gives you the platform to pray to study scripture to fast and to be broken and repentant before god your maker can i tell you this i think it was i can't remember the man of god now I was listening to years ago and he said any weakness unaddressed will eventually bring you down it is not the weakness it is leaving it and assuming there is no problem is someone learning now you must set aside time for a retreat a retreat is a time alone with god can i tell you when you are dealing with something this cancerous nothing should be too important you can't say i am too busy because this sustains the potential i'm going to tell you the, do you know the assignment of sexual immorality i will tell you the assignment of sexual immorality is not is not the sex that destroys you there is something it does to you spiritually when the devil wants to attack you there is a a, a threshold level of spiritual fire that if you possess it cannot allow for a demonic attack and so the way that it happens is to introduce this to your life and it begins to bring you down to a level spiritually where an attack upon your life any dimension becomes possible are we together one of the things it may interest you to know is that there is a strong relationship between the spirit of immorality and the spirit of untimely death 
there is a strong relationship so number one admit it with humility and brokenness crying to the god of your salvation number two a retreat is your next port of call a sincere time alone with god to cry out your heart before your maker in prayer in fasting in genuine repentance when jonah went to nineveh and announced to them the imminent destruction that was coming upon them the bible says immediately the king of nineveh declared a fast everyone fasted till the animals and all of them wore sackcloth and ashes and cried before god the thing about god is the moment there is brokenness his mercy is ready to come is someone learning let me recommend a scripture for you that you use for your retreat psalm 51 the whole of psalm 51 is the psalm of mercy this was the cry the pouring out he said have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression and then he says in verse 2 wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin verse 3 it says for i acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me verse 4 against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest verse 5 it says behold i was shaping in iniquity look at the psalmist pouring his heart before god and saying listen this uh, this was a tendency that has been fighting me for many years he couldn't find expression because i was not yet king can i tell you you need to cry for god's mercy because there are many people who are not victims of this not because the devil is not attacking you the opportunity that gives you room to execute it has not yet come and the spirit of loss can lie quietly for decades waiting for the day you are exalted i can tell you what came upon david did not come upon him in the palace it was there right from when he was in the bush who will come to you in the bush when there are lions and the rest are we together so that this immediately should damage any sense of self-righteousness of believing oh i think i'm fine uh-uh there are many people if you are exposed to one tenth their conditions you will fall like a pack of card koinonia are we together the purified bride so number one you must admit and acknowledge that you need help and the mercy of god it does not matter whether it happened through your carelessness given into the flesh it does not matter whether it's a product of an attack and a spirit it does not matter whether it has come as a result of foundations and ancestry patterns look at our dear sister the woman who shared this you see that her legs were broken same position same time the sister the same thing happening there are strong demonic patterns let me tell you the truth except you deal with this by revelation you can be a man of god you can be a leader you can be a father you can be a businessman that spirit from its ancestry will haunt you until you use spiritual intelligence to deal with it number three help now number one i said admit and acknowledge it your need for help number two you must set out time for a personal retreat a time of honest appraisal flog it out with destiny with all sincerity between you and god number three where it persists and is still beyond your control you must seek help you must seek help you must be honest enough to seek help you must seek help now let me pause here for a minute and just comment very quickly i'm dwelling on this issue of sexual immorality because i just want us to deal with it a little bit before we now discuss the rest it's a very serious issue do you know please look up do you know that in seeking help i submit to you that there are many people who desire to seek help but the reason is history has shown that especially we men of god have not sustained the kind of intelligence and maturity to manage people's private and painful issues is that true 
there are many people who have been wounded because they came and opened up to their prophet their man of god and said listen i think there is something i'm struggling with prayer partners accountability partners mentors men of god have in many regards disappointed the trust that people have had for them that is the reason why you see today people have resorted to flying abroad and going to go and meet therapists at least who will deal with it professionally and don't even know you rather than coming to cry to say man of god i think there is a challenge in my life many of us will pray and say oh let's pray father the devil cannot take over this person and later on before evening you have told your wife as a spouse you have told your husband ah this is our prayer group my god god is bringing a lot of deliverance you see the problem now and then the person will tell another person and say don't tell anybody i would deny i don't know you when anything backfires let me tell you the truth it takes more than being anointed to help people you must be trained we must incorporate this in our mentorship platforms as we build people anointing and revelation is not the only thing that qualifies for spiritual leadership people must sustain psychological knowledge the maturity and the know-how to manage sensitive things some of these people are in positions where managing and dealing with these issues can have severe effects on them their organizations their platforms you're a man of God here listening or within this place. We must know that when people open their pain up to you, it is a trust you must protect. Are we learning? But I want to tell you this. Help is powerful. It is amazing how something that looks like a mountain can be deflated in the presence of genuine help. There are people who are carrying spirits. So counseling will not solve the problem counseling you may walk around counseling and say okay this positive confession you will speak that in jesus name i'm okay and that spirit will just wait at the door of the counseling as soon as you are coming out it, before then it has gathered seven others that's what the bible says and it will land on you in a way that you cannot imagine that's why whether it's sexual immorality or people who are on drugs when you are talking to them have you seen how quiet you just keep quiet will you smoke again no will you drink me no that's the last time by evening do you know how this spirit works even if they travel to a region where they don't know anybody the spirit will coordinate a way they must know who sells what it's a spirit so number one admit number two a retreat set aside time to pray and fast and study scripture and cry out your heart in genuine brokenness and repentance before God. Number three, if and when the need arises, seek help. Seek help from mature people, your pastor. Seek help from your spiritual father. Seek help from mentors. People who have demonstrated maturity to be able to handle those issues. Number four, very quickly. Key number four is what many people avoid and ignore. And it is the reason why their deliverance is not complete number four create rules and boundaries in and around your life create rules and boundaries in and around your life proverbs 25 and verse 28 please 25 28 proverbs he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls create rules when you enter a relationship with your spouse intended to be create rules agree and pray and say in the name of jesus christ will keep this relationship pure up until marriage create rules don't allow your emotions to suggest from beginning settle it that by the grace of god as god grants mercy this is how it will be if you're with me say amen, amen. you must create rules and you must create boundaries in and around your life it's not enough to repent before god it's not enough to now be renewed in your decision there are systems that you must create especially for sexual immorality sexual immorality is highly atmosphere dependent you cannot stand and sleep with somebody in front of a police station or in front of a law court the atmosphere is not right
may be difficult to sleep with somebody when Don Moen is playing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please write, please write. Let's, let's get to work. There's a lot for us to do. Don't just laugh. I hope he's entering you. Tonight, there is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. Are we together? Pay attention, please. So, the final encouragement for you is connect to a larger family of believers. Community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, amplified. Please give it to us. Hebrews 10, 25, amplified. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as many believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. It says not forsaking the assembling of believers. When you connect to a larger body of believers, it can help you preserve your kingdom values. Are we together? Yes. Very, very powerful and important. So let me run through the step finally that to be free from the spirit of lust, sexual immorality, masturbation, pornography, and all kinds of vices, whatever it is. The first thing is you must admit that there is need for help. Number two, you must be able to set a time of retreat, of brokenness, repentance before God. Number three, seek help. Number four, you must create rules and boundaries in and around your life and then number five connect to a larger family of believers has god helped someone please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cry to the lord father i obtain mercy preserve me go ahead and pray preserve me preserve me if the message has hit you and perhaps your life has been that way do not be discouraged remember the one who God loves is the one he chastises. Lord, I obtain grace. Someone is praying. I obtain grace. Deliver me from sexual immorality. Deliver me from lust. For you, it may not be sexual immorality, but how about lust? Ungodly thoughts that roam around your mind, seeking for an opportunity to be executed. You can live and walk in freedom. Please pray. You are praying from the depth of your heart. For some of you is drunkenness, alcoholism. Some of you drugs and all kinds of vices. The purified bride must be free from this. Don't say it does not matter. The purified church must obtain grace from God. Please pray. Doesn't matter whether you are a pastor, apostle, prophet. God can give you a new beginning provided your heart is open to cry you are following online you are watching from any nation i like you to pray this is not a message unto condemnation it is a sincere admittance that will lead to purity holiness and lift you to a higher level of spiritual exploits someone is praying lord show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy i cry unto you You may want to extend that prayer to someone you know and love. Lord, show my spouse mercy, probably. Lord, show my husband, my wife. Show my children mercy. Show my parents mercy. Show my pastor mercy. Show my, my, my CEO mercy. Show this politician mercy. It's not a time of condemnation. The fall of one is the fall of all. The rising of one is the rising of all. We are a body that is interested in our corporate growth. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Pray for everybody you know. Prayer groups, churches, ministries, pastors, leaders, politicians, heads of government. No one, no one is beyond being tempted with sexual immorality. No one is beyond being tempted with other immoral perversions has nothing to do with being good or bad pray that those who are bound by any and all kinds of addictions let it be broken in the name of jesus you are praying for yourself and you are praying for them praying for the body of christ
we believe you are mightily blessed through this message. If you have not given your life to Christ, please say this prayer. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I know I have sinned against you. Forgive me all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And make me your own beloved child. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hi-ya, hi-ya.